We're coming up on the six month mark now that I've been using Starlink Internet as my sole ISP. Comcast is long gone, thank goodness. We can be rid of their evil rule on this world. And I certainly have some updates to talk about in my first half year of experience regarding the entire network as a whole, plus my own personal experience. Let's begin. <laughs> So for one, the first thing I just want to go out there and say has improved a lot is the stability of the internet as a whole. When I first installed it, the beginning couple of weeks were pretty bumpy and we couldn't even get through a movie without pausing and buffering. But now it's gotten so much more stable that even my live streams have retained the vast majority of their frames. Because I do a lot of live streaming, typically a couple hours every single week, it's actually been pretty easy to measure the stability of the service. So way back when I first installed it, typically I would live stream for about an hour and lose about 5% of the frames. It wouldn't be so bad it's unwatchable, but there would definitely be some moments where I'm lagging and sometimes the internet would just completely drop out and my bitrate would go to zero. So I would just flat out lose connection. And now I'm happy to say that in August that almost never happens. If it does, it's pretty rare these days. And now for most of my live streams, my frame drops are below 1%. And as time goes on, I've seen that number continue to drop, so I imagine that hopefully by the time Starlink is out of beta, there won't be frame drops at all, obviously. That's the goal, to get to zero, but I thought I would just mention that even on Comcast, there would be times where frames would drop. Just from there, cables going directly to our house sometimes being inconsistent or issues live streaming to different servers. So frame drops were not unheard of with Comcast, but they were certainly more rare, and Starlink has very closely been getting to that final point of the live stream streams are completely stable to the point that there's almost no lag at all and if there are dropped frames most of the time the bitrate is not going down to zero it's actually just dropping below the bitrate I set my live streaming software to go to and that results in people still able to hear me but the visuals during the live stream just kind of get a tad choppy once in a while but again we're talking about less than one percent of a full one hour live stream so I've been very happy with the stability improvements in that regard and of course we we haven't had issues for months now watching movies or TV shows, no problems there, and my wife is no longer having any issues with the internet and her job, so she does a lot of online chat and occasional online phone calls, and she used to run into issues when we first installed Starlink, and now I haven't heard her list a single complaint in the past three months, so I'm glad to see the reliability and the stability of the connection improve. The overall speeds, I have not noticed a giant improvement since I last reviewed Starlink way back in March. Download can still vary a lot just depending on the connection of the day. You know, sometimes I'll run a speed test and it goes over 250 down. And other times I'll run a speed test and it barely caps out 80. But this is to be expected with most satellite internet. It's not going to be a fixed steady speed at all times. But typically if you're downloading large files, you get to take advantage of those peak moments where the speed jumps up and you still download your file even if the speed drops down because it's compiling one file the best it can. However, speeds that I I have noticed improved is upload. This is actually one of the main reasons I was excited for Starlink because where Comcast is in my area, they don't have fiber options really, and the maximum upload speed I could get from them was technically 40 megabits up, and you had to pay for their stupid expensive gigabit plan to have access just to that 40 up. And if you tried to downsize your Comcast build, they would also lower the upload speed. So I was very curious to see how good the upload would get with Starlink because I upload several videos a day and we're sending a lot of files out from here. So at first, the uploads when we installed Starlink were somewhere between 25 and 30. And of course, similar to download, it fluctuates a lot depending on the day. But more recently, in the past couple weeks, I've actually clocked Starlink going over 40 megabits a second and even tapping 50 briefly. Again, it's not a sustained, consistent upload speed at 50, but I have done the speed tests and I have seen it go to 50. 52 was the highest I've ever clocked it. And that, of course, got me excited because now that means using Starlink internet, which is cheaper and there's no data caps currently, I hope SpaceX keeps it that way, I'm actually getting upload speeds occasionally faster than I got with Comcast. So in case some of you were wondering, when I first started with Starlink, I actually was doing all of my tech videos at 1080p because I figured not that many people were watching my videos at full 4k, so to save on time during uploads, I was just doing a lot of content at 1080p, but a lot of y'all were complaining. Some of you, I 
I guess do watch my videos at full 4k so they were like Drew please go back to 4k and I did once Starlink internet upload speed started improving and now all of my tech videos are pretty much filmed in 4k other than the occasional time sensitive piece which I have to get up faster than usual or if I do a video sitting down at my desk that camera I typically will record at 1080p just to save on time but the vast majority of my videos do upload at 4k and as far as I can recall they take about the same amount of time to upload as they did with Comcast so over time I'm hoping that the upload and download speeds can of course improve and now seeing the upload actually outperform what I could get with the highest tier best possible Comcast plan available here I'm like all right this was worth it for me already to be honest though one thing I'm surprised by given we're in the month of August is Starlink is still technically not out of beta they have not rolled this out to the public and started officially calling it like okay this internet service is out it's available to the masses I believe they're mostly bottlenecked by the number of users the network can support at a time and also trying to figure out how to mass produce these Starlink kits with Dishy McFlatface and everything inside it those that are currently being sold at a loss last we heard SpaceX was making them for $1,500 a piece but they were trying to get that price lower and it's also worth mentioning that that whole package they're selling for $500 which means SpaceX actually does not turn a profit on Starlink customers until 10 months of service has been issued and that's just for the upfront equipment costs that doesn't account for all the costs of sending their Falcon 9 rockets and building all of their satellites that get sent up into low earth orbit although now SpaceX has confirmed that they've sent over 1700 satellites up there which is incredible and while they're not technically out of beta yet they have been expanding the beta to be pretty massive they just confirmed that they have over 90,000 people on Starlink internet now and that's 90,000 people paying 99 bucks a month so hopefully Starlink starts becoming more profitable soon and it's launched in about a dozen countries now and they've said they've received pre-orders from pretty much every country on the planet so I'm excited to see this much interest in the service and I'm glad to see firsthand that the speeds and everything are improving but on a side note I have actually switched to using my old router that I used because the Starlink router that's included the coverage is just not very good and after a while I just got sick of having weaker Wi-Fi signal in the living room in the bedroom so it's an old Asus router there's nothing really fancy about it I bought it way back in 2017 but it just naturally has much better coverage and we're still using Starlink technically but we're getting much faster speeds in the bedroom way back when I reviewed Starlink and I was using their router I was getting between 10 and 15 megabits down whenever I was in the bedroom on my phone now thanks to my new router and also thanks to the improved stability and improved performance of Starlink I'm able to get over 60 megabits down in the bedroom so not that it makes a huge difference for the basic stuff you use your phone for but I've done live streams even from different points in the house just through my phone using Starlink internet and the connections really stable and the resolution is solid so I hope SpaceX can improve the router performance in the future but that's just one thing that I just decided to use my old one for for improved performance but also just in time for the six month mark Starlink has updated their mobile app to be a million percent better for one it has this amazing launch animation looks way cooler than the old one the old Starlink app felt like a beta app that just developers designed like only two or three people were working on it and I was fine with that because it's not really meant to be an app you use that regularly and we're in a beta period so I wasn't expecting the UI to be very crazy it was just very analytical and simple now the updated Starlink app feels like a real app you can check your old account statements from it you can put it directly in stow mode which just folds it up so you can put it back in the box if you're taking it on the go or something SpaceX still doesn't technically allow that yet so I hope in time we'll be able to take Starlink with us wherever we go and have really fast internet but as of right now it's supposed to only work within your set cell space around your area so more features to come in time but you also can check your outages now and for how long those outages last and before I would have several points in the day where the stats would say that there's no satellites or it would be beta downtime whereas now it's usually only eight to ten seconds within a 12 hour block that we've had outages and it's practically never saying anymore that there's no satellites so their first outer shell of the Starlink network has been sent up there and they're about to start sending more later this week except this time they're going to be sending satellites from the west coast instead of the east coast and they're going into more of a polar orbit but because they're going around the entire earth we should all benefit from those satellites even
even if you're not living in the North Pole or Antarctica. Basically, if you're not Santa. The app looks way better for dark mode users as well, which I appreciate, and they give you this new visibility checker, which is interactive, and you can scan around to see if your satellite is being obstructed by something. And overall, I'm just very impressed that this type of internet service, which you can technically access anywhere on the planet, will be able to let people upload 4K content regularly and also do live streams like I do. Even if the bitrate is kind of low, to get Starlink stable, I have to have a pretty dang low bitrate on OBS, which is about 2,000 kilobits per second. That's not terrible, but it's not great, and honestly, it's not even very good. It just allows for a basic live stream signal, and my FaceTime calls are fine. Like, I don't have any drops anymore when I'm talking to people through video chat. When I first got Starlink, it was pretty spotty, but now I can talk to people on FaceTime for hours and hours, and the connection is fine. But if you're trying to do, like, a gaming stream, 2,000 kilobits per second is really, really compressed, and because there's a lot more motion when you're playing a game and walking around, that results in the distortion and the low bitrate to become much more obvious than it does when you're just doing what I do and talking to a camera. So my tech streams are doing fine and not that many people complain, but if you go on a gaming stream and you try to up the bitrate to 5,000 or 6,000 kilobits per second, then the frame drops obviously become a lot more common and that's when I'm still seeing 6 or 7% of frames dropped within a one hour block. So there's definitely still some improvement left and I'm getting really down into the nitty gritty things of like, why can't satellite internet allow me to sustain a high bitrate gaming live stream? Not that a lot of people are going to need to do that out in the wilderness or out in the middle of the ocean, but that's just one aspect of Starlink internet that I would like to see improved in the future. But overall, I couldn't be more happy with the improved reliability. And I'm also happy to say the weather has had no impact on performance whatsoever. We've had really, really smoky days and that didn't hurt the connection. And we've even had days where it got over 110 degrees Fahrenheit outside and the connection was still solid. I'm very thankful that the upload speeds have gotten better and the app has been drastically improved. It looks like it's ready for prime time. And honestly, at this point with how the service is operating, I think it's ready. Like, I don't exactly know what SpaceX is waiting for with the public release. I have to imagine it's just a certain amount of users might overwhelm the network and result in everyone getting lower speeds. But if that's not the case, then I think this is ready for prime time. Like, I think they could deliver it in its current state to the public and not really have to worry too much about calling it a beta. You could say like during these early stages there might be very brief cutouts but the cutouts have become so small and so hard to notice that honestly I don't think it's that different from the occasional time Verizon or AT&T has an outage or random companies like Steam or Apple with iCloud. They have the occasional outage too despite not really being in beta so I think it's okay for Starlink to just have occasional little dropouts, but they're pretty rare, so I hope all of you who have pre-ordered can get your Dishy McFlack face as soon as humanly possible, but I'm very happy that I switched. Uh, there's no regrets on my side here, and I just hope they can improve the router performance and, of course, add more satellites to the network, as well as working on making sure they don't show up in astronomy photography as much as possible, which they are directly working on. Once they reach their desired orbit, it's much harder to see them, and they don't show up when you're taking pictures. It's only when they're first launched off of a Falcon rocket that they're in a weird state and they're angled in a way that reflects more light off the sun. So if you're worried about light pollution or cluttering out the night sky, it's not that big a deal. Honestly, I've tried in the past few weeks to spot them at night and I can't find them at all. But once SpaceX has Starship up and operational, they're going to be sending some next generation Starlink satellites with laser communication technology between them, which should result in even lower latency, even higher speeds, and they'll be able to deploy hundreds of satellites per launch for cheaper than even Falcon 9 launches. So we have nothing but good things to look forward to with Starlink. Feel free to let me know how Starlink is working for you. If you guys have it, this is your SpaceX sheep here, and I'll see you guys in the next one.